can everyone briefly unmute your microphones <laughs> and make some chaotic noise for Justin oh, Martin. Hey. 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 Oh, I'm seeing more hey, yo, familiar faces in the crowd. Ever. Oh, that's awesome, dude. Oh, <laughs> Fuck yeah. All right, that's enough. Please keep your mics muted um, just so that we can hear love. Justin. Justin, how are you doing? <laughs> How's I'm it going? So good. I am so glad to be here with everyone. This is um this is amazing. Thank you, Justin, for having me. And Dude. thank you to holy cow, there's a lot of people here. This is insane. So thank you, everyone. Dude, where are you calling in from? Are you at home in Oakland? I am. Yes. I am at my house in Oakland, hanging right now uh with Tango. Oh, Tango. Let's oh <laughs> yes. Out. Um, and, uh, yeah, jazz is somewhere upstairs. Um, but yeah, just hanging with the cats. Oh, that's beautiful. And one quick question. I've been seeing a lot of content on your IG from like a, a Yosemite trip. Yeah. Yeah. I just, uh, went on a, the trip of a lifetime. We did the mist trail shout out to my friends, coach Maiva and Suk. I think they might be in here. Mm -hmm. uh, Lauren, uh -huh. love you guys. Thank you so much. Um, appreciate you guys. Dude, that's so awesome. How yeah, are you feeling like to go to Yosemite? It's the most inspiring place right now, especially with all the, the, the ice melting. Um, the, the waterfalls are just crazy. That's dude. Insane. And yeah, I don't know. I'm sure like parts of that trip might've been like, kind of like physically demanding or whatnot. How are you feeling having gotten home? Are you feeling like restored, inspired? Oh, like what's the I vibe? I feel completely rejuvenated. Yeah, no, I, it's, um, yeah, I mean, the hike was challenging, but it was just it, it, nothing that anybody here couldn't do. Um, you get very wet on the trail. <laughs> you know, the, the mist from the waterfalls is incredible. We did a, a trail called the Mist Trail. Um, yeah, and it was amazing. Yeah, we got we got Souk in the chat here. He was he was our guide, so he showed us the ropes. Getting That's... wet is where I draw the line. <laughs> That's awesome. Also, Dylan Matra just hopping in. Let's go. <laughs> That's, That's awesome. Dylan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's up, brother? Awesome, oh dude, dude. Thanks for stopping by. Um, fuck yeah. So, dude, you know, I think this, maybe maybe we'll start here. You know, I think. Oh, we got Victoria in here. Um, What's up? <laughs> wow, the, the squad. Squad, oh, yeah. That's so awesome. The tree um, squad. <laughs> unreal. Um, all of us were here at Justin Martin's place in mid-April, and the energy was just, like, insane. Um, you know, I, I'm curious, dude. So, like, maybe, you know, sort of, like, riffing off the, the recent Yosemite trip that you just did, um, I don't know. Can you can you speak a little bit to just why does it matter to take time <laughs> to go to Yosemite and be out in nature with good people? Like, why is that something that you prioritize yes. at all? Yes, I am definitely well versed in this. Um, I, you know, I I find that there needs to be, especially um, there needs to be a balance in life. Um, we all work very hard. Everybody here, I'm sure, has jobs or does, is pursuing DJing or producing. And we're all chasing that dream. And no matter where you're at, you're, you're always going to be striving to go a little bit further. And um, there's just not enough hours in the day to achieve and accomplish everything that you want to. Um, and sometimes you can beat yourself up over that and it does not help your creativity. It does not help your productivity. I find that especially more recently, um, trying to find a good balance between doing things that are healthy um, outside or with friends, people that inspire me, that has such an incredible impact on the stuff that I do when I'm back in the studio. Um, if you're just in the studio and you're banging your head against the wall because you're stuck on something or you, you, know, you have this pile of work that you want to finish, um, you can kind of lose a little bit of sight of your joy 
um, and what it is that made you happy doing it in the first place. So I think it's good to have a little bit of perspective and a little bit of space and find things um, that are, are, are inspiring to you uh, outside of just making music or um, producing. Um, yeah, and it, it always ends up it always ends up somehow working its way back into what I'm doing. Um, so the last like couple months in particular, um, you know, without going into too many details, if you follow me, you can see my story. I've been going through a lot of different life changes and obstacles in my personal life. And I found that um, I needed to just, you know, music, it can be an amazing escape, but there's, it, it's, it's funny saying all this stuff because we're here for like, you know, music production, but I'm saying, I, I guess the lesson I'm, 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 that I've learned is sometimes it's good to put stuff down and um, give yourself a little bit of a break and do things that are inspiring to you. Um, you know, it's not always going to click in the studio and yeah. you don't have to beat yourself up over it. You can, you can take some time away. And you'll find that if you come back after doing something that's really inspiring to you or hanging out with inspiring people, you'll, um, the, the ideas will start to flow again. That's so beautiful. And just to check in, how are things right now? Are you feeling connected to the joy and fun of making music? I am indeed. Yeah. Let's go. That's yeah. huge. Yeah. You, you know, it, you happen to stumble um, back into my life, you know, we've always been friends, but, and I, I love you so dearly and everything you're doing for this community. I mean, look at all these people that are here, like they, you inspire so many people and that's such an incredible thing. But when we reconnected that week in San Francisco, it was sort of this, um, I don't know, reawakening for me all these things just started to connect again. I was working with some amazing artists at my house, Dylan, uh, AKA mantra and Victoria Ray. Um, you know, these, uh, shout out to Zoe. I don't know if she's in the chat, but we had this sort of, uh, collaborative writing week where we all got together and we were working on all of our, just a ton of different projects at once. And, um, feeding off of that energy was what kind of got me out of this um, creative rut that I had been in for quite a few months. Um, and luckily, you know, stumbled into you, we went on this amazing nature hike, and then ended up Justin and I ended up working together a few days later, uh, just the two of us. Um, and all of that stuff was just, you know, kind of, I was patient, and I just waited for this, you know, the timing to be right again for me to start writing. And, um, and since then, it's just been flowing out like a waterfall in Yosemite. Oh, let's go. That's so awesome, dude. And, you know, what you said, I feel like highlighting the fact that you took time for yourself without the pressure of feeling like I need to make something, I need to make something yeah. great. Yeah, Take burnout is a real thing for sure. Yeah. Um, last year, I was working in the hardest I have ever worked in my entire life. Um, and I was just determined to release as much music as I possibly could and get my label off the ground and write a new album. And all while having this pretty insane touring schedule. Mm -hmm. um, and I was very productive, but I was losing sight of the joy. Um, I, you know, things were, were suffering because of it, like my sleep and, and my mental and physical health. And I hit the reset button the end of last year and just put everything down and started thinking in my head how I wanted my, um, life to look and how I wanted to, what my goals were and what my priorities were. And if you don't have, if you're not in a good place mentally, it's really hard to be in a good place creatively. So I think that's such an important thing to prioritize. Um, 
for everybody, um, yeah. no matter where you're at. And in one of the key steps to that is being kind and gentle to yourself. Stop paying attention to what everybody else is doing. Don't worry about where you are and, you know, on, on your list of goals, just check in with yourself and make sure that you're still enjoying what you're doing. And, um, and if you're not, then you, there's things you can do to, to find that love and joy again. And sometimes it means taking a little bit of a break and getting outside and, or hanging out with people that really inspire you. 100%. You know, I feel like one of the things that I'm curious about you know, is this distinction between when you sit down to work and it being really fun versus not so fun and, you know, feeling uninspired, feeling like you don't really get anything out of making music. When you were, you know, I guess when things were more challenging, did you feel pressure? I, I, there's two things that always come up for me and I'm curious if either of these things showed up for you. For me, the fun disappears instantly when I feel like there's a pressure on how good the thing needs to be like, Oh, it's not this and good enough, you know? Or oh yeah. This I enough. absolutely <laughs> still feel it that uh, mm -hmm. that's I I'm, I'm definitely a perfectionist to a fault. And I, and it's something that I'm working on being able to let go of something. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'll work on a track sometimes for, I'm almost embarrassed to say it, but over a year, sometimes years, um, testing it, tweaking it, and just being like, there's something missing from this. And I just, I can't let go of it until I figure out what that is. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm playing it to thousands of people every weekend and it's working, I still will, will be like, nope, it's not there yet. Um, and and that that is definitely a an obstacle to overcome. And I, I'm still still working on that. And And I'm curious, this is maybe a more challenging question, but have you like reflecting back, are there any moments that come to mind where you've made, where you made a song, had the most fun with it, maybe did not get caught up in perfectionism and just like dropped some track without really thinking about it too much. And it like turned out yeah, well. I mean, that's when the, the most magical stuff happens. I, I always say, I mean, when we worked together, so Justin came over and we did this, uh, he had this idea. He's like, let's just both spend 10 minutes starting an idea. We listened to some inspiration. We, we were going through some old Dirty Bird Bay Area hyphy stuff, um, kind of a sound that got lost long, over the years. And um, we were like, let's just both start, or Justin came up with the idea. We both start a track on our, our own laptops. We only work on it for... 10 minutes. That was the idea originally. It ended up being more like 45 minutes. But uh, and then we trade. We trade laptops and and we see what each other has and we try to finish the idea. Um, by the way, I got this thing sort of cooking up. I was like, all right, this is kind of cool. Justin in the 45 minutes created a masterpiece. <laughs> I was like, this is done. There's, there's literally nothing I could do to make this better. Like, <laughs> like a full vocal hook. He was recording into his, uh, into his, uh, microphone yes. earpiece. Went, yeah. There it is. <laughs> I was like, I don't know how you did this, but, um, hats off to you, man. Yeah. And that was a blast. I, I really enjoyed that for me. I, I, that's the most fun part of making music is the creation part. Um, I, I, I definitely find that I will get a track playable I'll, and it'll, it'll be 95 to 99% there. And then it's that last five to one to 5% that'll take me another six months. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that is a lot of it. It is, it doesn't even necessarily change for the better in that small little, um, percentage that needs to be, that I feel like needs to be done. Um, it, sometimes it's just me in my own head feeling, or, or I guess being afraid to let go of, of, um, this idea of perfection. Um, mm -hmm. and I, 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 I'm definitely still working on that. Um, I, I feel like I've 
got a lot to learn still. I think like it never ends. You're, we're always learning, but um, yeah. it's, yeah, it's something that I feel like, um, I don't know. I, I may, maybe some other people in here can relate with. Yeah. Just, just curious for anyone out there, if you've grappled with perfectionism while making music or any of this stuff, feel free to give us a thumbs up with like either the react emoji or just like on your camera. And I'm sure you're, you scroll around. It's like so many people. <laughs> I am sure. Yep. Yep. Seeing the thumbs up. It's, it's you. such a, you. you know, we're, we're all in this together. And I think it's we so, it, it's so interesting because, you know, I mean, even for me as a fan of yours, Justin, you know, you know, it is when we first talked about that, I was like, no way, you know, it's like, it's crazy because it's so easy to look up to someone and hear all this amazing music and be like, oh, they got it figured out. And I feel like it's, it's just so interesting that I feel like it is such a, a lifelong journey to like grapple with, um, I don't know, just letting go of that self-judgment maybe. And I'm curious for you, what does get you over that final hump? How do you say, this is good enough. This is ready to release. What, how do you do it? It's a good question. Um, it, it could be a wide range of things. Um, sometimes it's just a, a crowd reaction, testing something out and being like, okay, this is working. Um, sometimes it is, uh, sometimes it's playing it for a peer, someone who I respect. Um, and I mean, you know, I'll get sometimes I'll have like three or four or five different versions of finished versions that of a song and that I just can't decide which one is better. And it could be something as stupid as a hi hat that is just like, is, does this sound out of place? Or is this, you know, innovative? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't think it's ever, I, you know, if if you're familiar with sort of what I do, I, I'm not really ever in a rush to release things in general. Um, I kind of like having a body of work that um, is unique to my DJ sets. So even when I do finish a track and release it, I, I still am tweaking things and making VIP edits and trying to create new versions so that it's a fun listening experience for whoever I um, am performing for. But I think that, I, I don't know. I, I don't think things ever have to be done. You can release stuff and, you know, that's kind of the beauty of, of dance music is we're able to, the goal is to be able to perform it for friends or an audience of fans. And um, we have the technology now to just sit in a hotel room and, and make a new version of a song or fix something that we don't like in a song. Um, I, I've started to definitely like let go a little bit of the idea. Like there was this, my, my old manager, Jonathan, uh, used to get so annoyed because I would always turn in like at least 10 final versions. And it would be like, the, it would be like the deadline. I turn in the final version, I bounce it out. And then I'd be like, no, 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 that's not it. Hold on. I got to send you a, a new updated version. And that would be like the ritual, every single release or um, deadline, like day that, you know, stuff was due. Um, I have learned to let go of that at least. Like, <laughs> that's I, I, awesome. Yeah. I mean, I do, I do think it's important to spend time on the details. I do think it's important to um, add for me personally, and, I, and it could be different for everyone, but to have a level of depth in your song that makes it timeless. Um, I want people to be able to listen to something that I made, you know, 50 times and hear something a little bit different, little Easter eggs that are hidden in there. Um, but yeah, I, I I think that there's there's also like a you know a point where you you're not making it better anymore. You're yeah. just changing it, and mm -hmm. um, you have to be able to be self aware enough where when you're doing that, and you're like, all right, is this you know 
how many times have you gone back to an earlier version of a track and like, oh, wait, wait, this is way better. <laughs> this, <laughs> this one is raw. This one has the emotion. How did I get so far away from this original idea? Um, 100%. And it's a battle. It's an ongoing thing. I don't have the answers, unfortunately. Yeah. I wish I did, but I don't. Yeah. You know, it, and it's, it's funny what you just mentioned about like having 10 versions and stuff. For me, like, I see it all, all the time, especially with like, I run a little record label and so many times where I get a demo and it's like version three and I'm like, yo, this is incredible and let's release it. And then I get back a couple months later, version 12. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, can we, can we actually just go with version three? <laughs> yeah, no, I, 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 I've seen that so many times as well with um, friends of mine um, yeah. with no names, but amazing producers who have sent me music and they'll get annoyed because I'll be playing version three and <laughs> the, like the version that gets released and mastered and everything. I'm like, no, but this one just has the thing, you know, it has yeah. that, that rawness. So yeah, I, I, you know, it's, it's, I think it's good. This is another reason why it's, it's good to give yourself a little bit of a break and yeah. step away because you could sit there in the studio and just constantly change something over and over again. You need perspective. You need to listen to something. I, I find it's, you know, going and listening in the car after a day or going and listening in a completely different environment or playing it for somebody that maybe doesn't even have to be a, a, a you know, a producer or a DJ. You just listen to it differently when you're presenting it to somebody else. Yeah. Um, and um, you'll hear things instantly. You'll be like, oh, okay, that definitely needs to get fixed or you'll be like all right this is cool 100 percent. you know i feel like my favorite image for this process it's like when there's songs that can just exist as like almost a snapshot in time you know of like that one weekend in july <laughs> or whatever and you know that's it that's how it turned out and you know kind of like a like a, a Polaroid photo where it's like unedited yeah, and like right, right. just comes out. That's how it is. The beauty is in the imperfections. Right. You know, someone in the chat um, mentioned like the term like overcooking. And I feel like, I don't know, it's such a, it, I think it is, it is such an interesting balance. You know, it's like on one hand, putting in that time and effort to get that, those details and that character that like you mentioned make the song feel timeless. And on the other hand, I love the metaphor of thinking about making music like cooking, like if you're cooking a burger, you know, and you just, you know, it's like medium rare is probably what <laughs> the chef would recommend. But if you just leave it in the oven too long and it's just, you know, turned to rubber, you're going to lose all the, all the character. Um, True. Right. Personally, you know, like I love sushi. I love raw music, you know, um, but I feel like, but you don't it, want to eat a raw burger. That's true. And that's why this is, <laughs> this discussion needs to take place. And, you know, I'm with you. I, I feel like there's so many songs for me that come together in an afternoon or an evening and other songs that take years. And I don't know, I think at the, at the end of the day, it's just like, as long as there isn't self-judgment, you know, and kind of like, you know, being overly critical on yourself when it's like, uh, this song is not good enough. So I'm bad. <laughs> I am not good. I'm right. like, right. You know, totally. I, I, I think something that's, um, for me, very helpful is working on a lot of different projects simultaneously. Cool. Um, I, I think it's, if you're just focused on only one thing, um, you again, don't really have that perspective that to, where you can step away. Um, I, I love having, a, I mean, I have so many unfinished project, projects, it's insane, but I love having a few that I am set out trying to finish that I can bounce behind uh, between especially when I'm really flowing on, on mu on working on music. I want to be able to um, just spend an hour on this yeah. and put it down and 
get excited about working on the next project that that like I have a really cool idea on. And that kind of gives you this, um, you know, with you can stay productive, but you can also give yourself a little bit of space from each thing so that you can come back to it and, and hear what it needs or or what it doesn't need, you know? Totally. You know, to kind of, you know, sort of like shift gears a little bit, you know, we were talking about the difference between making music when it's fun versus when it's not fun at all. Um, right. You know, and I feel like, you know, this discussion about perfectionism, pressure about the song being good enough or this enough. I'm curious, there's another thing that I think about a lot, and I'm curious if this showed up for you at all over the past few months. For me, I feel like whenever I feel boxed in creatively, where I feel like, like I'm unable to make a song in a certain genre, or a certain vibe or a certain energy because it's not what I'm supposed to do. It's not oh, the yeah. right fit for this label or for my right. DJ sets. I'm curious how much that sort of creative flexibility has like shown up for you. I try to pay as little attention to what everybody else is doing as possible. Mm -hmm. I, you will just be riddled with imposter syndrome if you're, trying to focus on making a song that rivals a, a hit record or, you know, fits a certain label. That's not fun for me. I, I, I want to, I mean, a lot of the music, the inspiration I draw is from genres that are far outside of the dance music realm. Um, and I, I think that um, it's okay to, you know, be inspired by somebody else's dance track and, and try to, you know, use it as sort of an exercise to create something new, but be creative, be unique, like tap into, um, it's important to, to try to find your own sound. Um, yeah, it, it, for me, like I, I, I kind of stopped. Uh, it was it was one of the reasons why I started my own record label was because I didn't want to try to make music to fit somebody else's um, taste. I wanted to make music that was truly me, um, and it's, um, yeah. I don't know. I, I I just I recommend like whatever it is that that musically inspires you. Um, try to spin it in a way that is yours. Um, don't just try to create something for somebody. All right. Well, yes. Hold on. Let me click the. Oh, yeah. Um. Awesome, dude. You know, just to to. I'm curious. Like, so I, I I'm I'm wondering like uh what I I want to hear your answer to this. Well, you know, I feel I couldn't agree more. I think. To me, the big thing to keep an eye out for is self-censorship. When you want to do something like, oh, I want to put this vocal on the song. You're like, no, that's not underground enough. Or, you know, oh, I want to put in this weird sound. And you're like, that sounds too weird. No. Or like right. change the BPM or like explore like a different style of music than you think you're allowed to play or release or show your friends yeah, or whatever, you know? Explore, go <laughs> crazy. There are no bad ideas. Like everything is worthy of a chance. Um, yeah. That's how innovation is started. You, you, yeah. know, you need to take chances. You need to, you know, before there was Dirty Bird Records, there was a giant hole in dance music there was nobody creating anything like that. The first song that we made, Sammy D and I, the first Dirty Bird record had a fart sound in it. It was the <laughs> stupidest thing ever. It was a country hoedown techno song. It was called Southern Draw and it was the silliest record ever. And we just made it because it was fun. And we weren't worried about what people would think. We started playing it and people 
it was so different that people are like, what the hell is this? And it created, it was the beginning of a whole new world of dance music. It was the, 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 the starting point for us to be like, okay, we can be as creative and, and silly as we want. We can take inspiration from hip hop and drum and bass, and we can throw it into dance music. And, um, you know, if we had, you know, listened to our common sense at the time, like there's, you know, that fart sound would have made it into that track and who knows, <laughs> you know, if we'd be having this whole chat right now. Yeah. So I, I, I think that it's just, it's gotta be fun. You know, it has to be fun. Like this is, this is why we all get into it. We don't get into it to, to be depressed or to, mm -hmm. Um, we get into it to express ourselves and to um, make people dance and bring mm -hmm. a smile to people's face. So there's, you should always explore every idea. You, you, you could create a whole new genre. I, I mean, everything you're doing, Justin, is so, I remember seeing you. It's so funny because there's all these things like you playing losing it at <laughs> 60 b or 150 bpm and then seeing fortet do that at coachella and then there was flume just posted um uh my heart will go on <laughs> yeah and i saw when we played together where was that in, in portland or no yeah. no it was in new york i think at mm -hmm. knockdown center i remember you like standing on the decks playing that <laughs> like uh, oh my god it was it was and and you know i love that you take these chances it's what makes um, it, it makes it fun. And, and I appreciate that. Um, and I think that more people should take chances and not worry so much about being cool or what what's hot or what fits what label like fuck all that shit. Sorry, I think my mom and dad might be here. So I <laughs> hi, mom and dad. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, that's so awesome. Um, uh, hello, Mr. and Mrs. Martin, if you're here, welcome. <laughs> um, you know, and it, first of all, thank you for the kind words. I really appreciate it and for just putting up the chaos. You know, I think just to expand on this one one level further, and, I, you know, I feel like you are someone who really embodies this idea. It's like when it comes to stepping outside of just like a box of like one genre or something I feel like it doesn't even need to be a calculated sort of like focused thing I think so much of it can be just like actually let like leaning into just the music you actually love listening to and I, I think for you you know when you talk about the beginnings of Dirty Bird and all the crazy music that you were making you know it's like you were listening to all this like hyphy Bay Area hip-hop you were listening all to all this like drum and bass and instead of it was just like already in your dna and i feel like now you know you, when we were together in san francisco you know when we were in the car together you were playing all this awesome you know kind of like singer songwriter oriented kind of like you know sort of uh i don't know what to call it like maybe kind of like hip-hop lo-fi like chill stuff that you said you would never play in like a DJ set. And it's like, why not take that inspiration in and just see what happens with it? Does that sort of kind of like describe how, how it feels for you when you talk about bringing things yeah. into the blender? You know, I, I think, I think for me, I'm always sort of, I, I'm definitely trying in a way, maybe a little bit more and to a little bit more subtle degree in to tricking people into liking things that um, they normally wouldn't listen to. Um, you know, when I play, I play everything from, it's just dance music. It's, you know, everything from deep house to, to techno, to even drum and bass and hip hop. And, um, I just want to make people smile and have fun. Um, yeah, and it, yeah you know, like you can, there, I love, I love these videos that you post where you're tricking people into like tricking <laughs> people into <laughs> into like genres that they maybe wouldn't listen to otherwise. Um, and, you know, it's the whole idea of genres is just so silly to me. It's like a good track. There could be a good track in any genre of music um, or something that resonates with you. It's all subjective. So to 
just adhere to only things that fit within one small microcosm of music as a whole um is it's just silly like we i want to share the stuff that i love i want to mm-hmm. share everything i want to share different tempos and different bpms i want to share stuff that's emotionally resonates with people stuff that can that's you know makes you feel happy sad stuff that you know makes you want to hug your friends stuff that um and and that can exist in in so many different genres it could be drum and bass or house or techno or you know lo-fi hip-hop or uh just total like indie country there's sorry there's my cat upstairs must be like doing something crazy (laughs) I just heard a bang. And I'm like, I think I'm home alone. <laughs> yeah, I think he just jumped, jumped onto the, there's like a chair that spins around and he knows how to spin it. Anyway. Oh, that's so awesome. Yeah. So, you yeah, know, so, I forgot what I was saying, but yes, explore it all, please. And, you know, one of the things that I love, just generally speaking, I love hearing music made by people who are brand new to making music because when you don't know what you're doing, you kind of aren't capable of putting yourself into a given box because you don't even know what, you don't even know like how to make you don't even know what the distinctions are, the choices. And I feel like that's another thing that shows up for me when I think about your early music too. And if you're open to it, I'd love to kind of rewind the clock a little bit and you know talk, you know, ask you some questions about when you first started producing. Um, Let's do it. And, you know, I guess when you first began, were you at all intimidated? I think that I was just so excited to have my first computer. <laughs> so many ideas because I'd been DJing from the age of 15 and I didn't get a computer until I turned probably 21 or 22, I saved up and bought my first desktop. And I had Reason software that was cracked. And I just had so many ideas from the time that I started DJing. I was Music was always a really big part of my life, but I didn't start producing until, I guess I was probably 21. Um, that would make the most sense in the timeline. Um, and it was all about exploration in the beginning. It was just trying to figure out how I could get, um, my ideas down and it all sounded horrible, horrible. Like in terms of like the ideas were cool. Musical ideas, 11 minute songs that, you know, had everything in the, but like the kitchen sink thrown in, you know, it was just like all right, let's have it go this way and this way and this way. But the stuff that was horrible and, and I'm, I I don't, I'm just looking back. I don't mean to like criticize myself like this. It was like, it was very challenging at first to figure out how to get things to sound like what I was listening to on the records that I was buying. Um, And that took about a year or two of just exploration and, you know, watching, listening to to friends um, give me production tips and um, watching anything that I could that could help me learn and just, yeah, exploration, sticking with it. Um, and, and it took, yeah, it took me, I don't think I was really intimidated. I think I was just really excited. I was just, mm-hmm. um, every song was like my best song yet. You know, one of those things where it's just, and that went on for, for, for years from like 2000 and I'm going to totally date myself here. I'm, I'm, uh, but I'm 2001 is probably when I bought my computer. And then my first release was in 2004. So there was a lot of, um, nerding out in in that time, figuring Mm -hmm. out how to make something sound the way that was dance floor worthy or would hold up to other songs that the professionals were making right i love that how like if you enter that like excited mindset you're like your first song no matter how good or not good it is it is your best song (laughs) 
<laughs> and then like you learn a little bit more your next one might be your next best song and yeah. at a certain point it might not even be about best or whatnot they might all just be different but um you know when we were on a hike together you mentioned something that blew me out of the water um in terms of what i believe might have been one of your first releases um on buzz and fly um or you had a breakthrough. I wonder if you can like guess what I'm talking about. You had a breakthrough with the drums. Um, and there was this, you know, I'll try to set this up. There was this artist who you really looked up to who had this awesome record label and you nailed the drums on this track. How did you figure out how to nail the drums? <laughs> well, I sampled his drums. <laughs> <laughs> And this is my, but this was my uh, first track that ever got signed. It was called "The Sad Piano," um, and it was on Buzz and Fly Records. It was signed by Ben Watt. Ben Watt had just started the record label. He's from uh, this indie pop electronic duo called Everything But the Girl, um, and I was such a huge fan of Everything But the Girl. Um, it was very instrumental in me. Um, during my formative years learning about dance music, you know, there was a few acts that really resonated with me. Bjork, Goldie, LTJ Bookham, and this um, group, Everything But The Girl, and D-Light. Um, and uh, yeah, so I he released this track called Lone Cat, and I just ripped the drums <laughs> straight up. <laughs> and used it for sad piano and then i sent him the demo and um and he signed it <laughs> like the drums did he ever comment on the drums being like I, yo we definitely had a conversation about it at some point um there was definitely a conversation about it at some point but um <laughs> do you think he changed no, I, them or did happened? you just leave them did you leave oh, them oh yeah yeah there yeah if you listen to the two songs you'll like they're both on buzz and fly. You can hear them both. Uh, their drums are nearly identical. I believe. <laughs> That's um, so awesome. Can, can you know maybe... I, I, I still uh -huh. to this day, like I, this is how I work. I, I, I sample people's music. I just think that there's, um, it's important to like, I sample drums from all over the place. I sample, um, you know, bass sounds that I find in drum and bass tracks. I sample all kinds of stuff. Like, you know, I've got this studio that I've worked my whole life to build, but I'm still like a sample guy. You know, mm -hmm. I definitely do when, when I come upon a sample that I can't, um, I can't use and I'll, then I'll do my best to, to recreate it. Mm -hmm. But this is important. It, I think it's very, you know, there's a difference between sampling and, you know, I shouldn't be preaching this because I totally ripped those drum, drums off, but I think there's a difference between sampling and, and, and flipping something, a sample into a creative way. Um, you know, there's, we, we have such now everything at our fingertips. We have platforms like splice, um, any VST you can imagine, like you can basically download a, you know, a ton of software for free and, I still think it's just so important to, despite, you know, sampling the record on the sad piano, the, uh, the drums on sad piano, I think it's really important to just be as creative as you possibly can. Drums are okay. Drums are drums. If the drums are dope, like, you know, go ahead, sample my drums. I don't care. I'm not <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, and you know, it's like whole genres of music, like the Amen break, you know, right. Everyone sampled I mean that. Drum yeah, and I still and, I still use that. Um, yeah, I'm I'm using that on a remix I'm doing for Mantra right now. Oh, that's awesome. And yeah, I don't know. You know, it, it's funny because I feel like if you look at the technology and just the history, of it, you know, if you look at hip hop, it all you know so much of it came from sampling other people's drum beats, other people's songs and melodies. I feel like right. house music to this a is something degree, though that all, this yeah. is this is important. Yeah. There's a lot of music that I cannot release because mm. of samples. True. Uh, so I, I, you know, I'll play them in my sets. They're my special arsenal of secret weapons, but 
um, there's just there's there's a there is a fine line between I think um, stealing and sampling and if if you don't if you, if it's something you think you need to get permission for then get permission for it and if you can't get permission for it and and then don't put it out um, yeah I, it, I think it's kind of important to to state that hundred percent and it's just kind of interesting because I think. You know, there's two sides of it. There's the side of like being an artist, you're creating from a place of inspiration and love. And then there's also the, you know, sort of questions that arise when you're like, you know, selling records or profiting off of other right. people's stuff. And right. what's interesting as like an artist, you know, I feel like if it's fun and you do it, even if you don't end up making a penny off of a bootleg remix or something with a big sample, I mean, you DJ could become something that people really love. And I know, you know for you, you know, there's, I think that's a big thing that even though you've never released some of those incredible bootlegs, you know, I feel like they become fan favorites anyways, which is so, so interesting, right? Yeah. And definitely it, it and it's, it's good to have, you know, especially if you're per performing your, the music you're making, it's good to have original stuff. That's what makes you you. You you mm -hmm. want to have some stuff that nobody else has. Like it 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 makes the experience special for whoever it is on the dance floor because they're hearing something that's completely you know unheard before. Um, so you know even if something, I don't think it should it should stop you from creating. What you know the. The end goal is not always just releasing the music. The end goal is to make the music to make people dance, for me at least. So yeah. I just want to make a bunch of stuff. Some stuff will make it out and you know will be part of my original catalog, and some stuff will you'll just have to come and see me DJ to see, to hear it. One hundred percent. And just to kind of like you know wrap up this discussion on sampling, you know, I just feel like the fact that you you know, and I don't know if you could apply this to every aspect of your production, but when you mentioned that when you first began, you're like, how do I make it sound done or finished? And then you go and sample Ben Watts drums and then end up signing the song to his label. I, I just, it's so cool. And I'm, I'm curious, like, do you think, you know, do you think sampling like in that way then helped kind of you in your journey of figuring out how to make music? yeah definitely definitely i mean you know i'm one of my biggest inspirations was uh during this period of time in my life was dj shadow mm -hmm. and if you listen to introducing that entire album is composed of samples everything right. and beauty about the way that he took these bits and pieces of all these different songs the heart and soul of all these different songs and created a story in each song. Um, you know, you have records that were sampled that have a unique dust pop or scratch to them, like crackle, um, that cannot be rec recreated by any means, but unless you play that one record that was sitting in, you know, some dusty shelf somewhere. So, there's something romantic to me about the idea of putting these little bits and pieces into a song and making, you know, it's not just like playing a VST on a keyboard. You have something that's, that means something to you that's raw, um, hidden within there. It's like the heart and soul. You're just kind of like, you're, you're infusing it into your own creation. Um, I think that's the beauty of sampling. That's the beauty of hip hop. Um, you know, a lot of those, those nineties records, and um, that I still find like timeless and inspiring. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and just in general, like, you know, there's, I've, even when I'm not sampling um, or, or using sounds that are from samples, I'm trying to make it sound like it is, you know, mm -hmm. like I'm adding, I'm, I'm trying to do a unique process to things to make them sound a little bit more lo-fi or a little bit more, um, nostalgic mm -hmm. it's totally i think it's important to to have that emotion in your songs like if everything is i mean and everyone's different this is just me talking about my my style that i i 
what I'm trying to uh, get across to the listener. Um, I, I want a feeling of nostalgia. I, I definitely, I work hard to make things sound um, crappier. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's so awesome. By the way, I just noticed a comment uh, from Connor, uh, Cold Sweat. He wrote, literally heard sad, sad piano out last weekend. Oh, it's no still way. getting played. That's so awesome. And I don't know, this kind of brings up a, a random question old. for you. <laughs> old next year. I just did a, um, I just remade it. Um, I, I did a new mix down of it. And and I'm, this is really funny. It goes back to what we were talking about earlier. I, I was like, oh, I'm going to use all this new knowledge that I have now in my career to um, to do a much better mix down of this. And I'm like, no, the, I think the original just sounds better. <laughs> That's so epic. Yeah. And, and, and I'm curious, cause that song was like a, a really big moment for you and your professional journey. Um, I'm curious, how many versions do you think you made before you set the demo? What would you guess? Not not very many to be honest with that one that that's actually a very simple track i think there's maybe like less than 10 stems <laughs> it's like the beat the bass um there's an arp there's the piano line that gets put into reverse same piano line uh halfway through the song and uh and then the little vocal chops um and i think that the, the early version of it, I went a little bit too nutty with the vocal chops, and then I dialed that back. And I also added a filter to the um, to the breakdown. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I see Dylan over here smiling because I actually told him this story when I was helping him with the uh, mix down for his next single uh, that week that he was over here. Uh -huh. uh, it's like, just trust me, just try it. Just just try this. This time. <laughs> um, and I know Victoria was very happy about that. That's awesome. There's a, an amazing song. I'm just going to do a quick uh, mm -hmm. shameless plug here. It's yeah. called Spiraling, and it's a collaboration with uh, with Dylan Mantra and Victoria Ray. Um, and it's going to be out um, on What to Do. It's a drum and bass tune. It's absolutely beautiful. And then it's also the first single from uh, Mantra's album, which I'm going to be releasing later this year. So very exciting music on the way. Um, they are a dynamic duo together and in even separate. Um, I've been just so inspired by both of them and I'm stoked that they're here right now. That's so awesome. Yeah, everyone keep an eye out. Um, that should be, yeah, so dope. Um, dude, one one more question about the, the whole sad piano thing. I think it's, it's so interesting because you, know, you mentioned 10 tracks, <laughs> you know, really simple production. Um, you know, I'm curious, you know, if you were to guess, like, was that a song you spent months and months on or like oh, a few days? No. Like, what, what did that look like? That was a quick one. I, I actually, it was, um, I went through a breakup um, and it was, the, the breakup was actually like, because I was starting my DJ career and I was like, I just want to, I want to spend all my time doing this. And, um, it, you know, early young me like was very, very stubborn and just, um, pursued music instead of, um, the relationship and it was heartbreaking. And I ended up writing that song right after, right out of that breakup. Um, and I remember playing it for my friend, Greg bird. I had a residency at this place this legendary little dive bar club called the top in San Francisco back in the day. Um, me and Sammy D played there every Wednesday. And the first time I played it, Greg bird is one of like the, he was the promoter for the night and one of the um, best musical like tastemakers in my opinion, like he just knows his shit. And he came up to me and he was like, what is this? He was like, this is amazing. And I, I don't think anything I had played up to that point for him had any kind of reaction at all. And I was just like, okay, if Greg bird likes it, I think I'm onto something here. <laughs> and 
Yeah, I remember I was going to, uh, I was trying to save up enough money from bartending so I could go to Miami that year and pass out the demo CD because that's how you did it back then. And, um, and I didn't, I didn't make enough money at the bar shift the night before I was supposed to leave. So I ended up just FedExing it overnight, the demo CDs to my brother. And he actually went to the, um, to see Ben Watt play and handed him the CD with it on it. And, uh, yeah, that's how it ended up getting, I got it. I got a, an email maybe like two weeks later that I thought was a prank from one of my friends. Cause there was like, there's no way Ben Watt is emailing me right now. <laughs> uh, and it was one of the, the most, yeah, exciting moments of my career still to this day. It was really, really a dream. And when that song came out, did you start to get opportunities to DJ in other parts of the world and stuff like that? Yeah, right out the gate. I uh, went from just having this, you know, Wednesday night residency in San Francisco to being thrown on my first air, uh, airplane DJ gig to uh, London and um, yeah, it was, it all started to happen. It's so crazy. Cause I always like look back at this and I, there's always like these moments where I was like, Oh, I made it. And there is so much like more to come. Like the, whatever you can dream of, you can accomplish. I remember thinking when I got on that first flight to fly to London to play my first international gig, I was like, this is it. I did it. This is what I've always wanted. And that was literally 20 years ago or, or 20, 19 years ago. So, and I still don't feel now like I've accomplished all the stuff I want to accomplish. So I just feel like, you know, you never stop, never stop. Just keep, keep trekking and, and keep, um, you know, pursuing. Crazy. And, and just, you know, it, it's just so interesting because, you know, you talk about sometimes there's those songs that take a really long time, years, et cetera. You mentioned going through this breakup, expressing yourself through the music, you know, your homie promoter hears it. You're like, oh, I guess this is good. <laughs> and lo and behold, like a whole adventure now, like <laughs> opens up because, you know, I, I, you took the sort of the courage, you took the leap to FedEx that track <laughs> yeah. to your brother to then send to Ben Watt. It's and it's so, just like crazy, it's right? So wild. It's like, there's, there's, there's so many things like this that have happened in my career. I think it's, you know, there's important things. These are the most important things that I live by. Um, first of all, first and foremost, be a good person, like be nice to everybody that you, everybody that you meet, be kind because um, the people that inspired me when I first started off were people like Ben Watt, like the people that took the time to give me to listen and give me the time of day. Um, number number two, like I, I I really think that it's just like so important to to put yourself out there fearlessly. Um, if you really want to do this, there's we live one life. Just take every shot that you can and. Don't be afraid of rejection. Don't be afraid of, you know, somebody that didn't listen to your, to your demo. Like there's, there's, you know, you never know it's possible unless you try. And I know this all sounds pretty cliche, but it's like the reason why I've been able to have a successful de a DJ career, music career, um, living out what is my passion in life. Um, and you know, you're, 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 and not everything's going to be perfect. It's, you know, there's going to be missteps along the way, but you just have to realize that everything, there's a lesson in everything. Everything has a lesson. Failures are so much more important than the little successes because you will learn so much more from, from failing than you will from a, achieving like these little steps along the way. So don't be afraid to fail and, um, yeah, I don't know. Damn. <laughs> so beautiful. So inspiring. And I feel like that's 
a great note to to end on. I know you have to leave in like 10 minutes. Um, Justin, would you be down to take a few questions from the Yeah, uh, from absolutely. The no, my, my, uh, my buddy said that his um, flight was delayed, so I don't have to pick him up for another. I'm, I'm good. We're good for like another at least 20. Okay, awesome. Sweet. So awesome to hear that. So um, how about this? For all of you watching, if you have any questions, why don't you drop some comments in the chat and I'll try to um, moderate and see what we can cover in the time that we have left. Um, I wish okay. I had, I wish I could have read this whole chat. I haven't read any of it. <laughs> it's been popping. Um, okay. Let's see. Um, and yeah, Justin, do you want to, do you want to just have at it or, you know, why, why don't you pick some? Um, cool. I'll, I'll, I'll the pro here. Yeah, dude, I'll curate. All right. Let's see what we can do. Um, okay. Let me, there's a lot. It's already just going crazy. Um, Justin, what's your connection to skateboarding? <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. My parents bought me and my brother skateboards when for Christmas when I was probably like, I don't know, second grade or something like that. And it was just a massive part of my childhood growing up. It was what I did every single day after school. It was dictated my, you know, kind of who I was friends with, who I like. It was just part of my personality for a good part of my uh, growing up, I would say well into past college. And then I got to a point, I think it was, it was probably like 26 or 27. And I was, I was actually on the phone with Jay flip skateboarding home from a bar drunk and don't do that. And I uh, was bombing a hill in San Francisco and I fell and ate shit so hard and um, pretty sure I broke my collarbone. Um, and I had to get on a plane the next day. And that was the moment I realized that, like, I think that um, I had to stop pursuing my skateboard. <laughs> Fair enough. There was other things more important, and I had to stay healthy and in good shape. Um, but, I, yeah, I still have all my boards, and I still cruise around quite a bit. That's awesome. And I guess, you know, producing much safer hobby physically. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's awesome. Um, bunch of people asking where would you suggest to start um with making music like for anyone out there who's curious and wants to explore it you know um i i think that for me it, like i said earlier it all started with getting a computer um and downloading software um there's you know so many different ways that you can go about it um, but if you want to make electronic music, then you kind of, I think the first step would be getting a computer that can handle something like Ableton. Um, and then talk to your friends, get some like, you know, advice on, on what plugins they use and what, um, I mean, Ableton comes built with so many amazing things already. Like you can just get started right out the gate. And I, and I, I, did the Ableton lesson. And I think it was like Ableton six, there was like a, a tutorial that just literally walked you through how to start doing it. Like, and um, I don't know if it still exists. It's been a long time, obviously, but I'm, I'm pretty sure. I mean, you can have the tips on Ableton where if you hover over anything, it'll tell you in the bottom left corner what it does or how to use it. Um, and uh, I, I, I think that, you know, just dive in there's so the other thing is like i learn i still to this day learn so much stuff on youtube um i just i just geek out and just watch videos like you have any question at all like it exists the answer exists out there um you don't have to call a friend you can just literally go on youtube and you can find answers 100 percent. it's crazy um dude in respect for navigating reason before youtube because that <laughs> that must have been wild um uh also one thing that i want to mention um you know ableton does have a 90-day free trial which is awesome and like justin just mentioned there are tons of like incredible youtube tutorials like some that ableton made others like just find by searching around it's crazy and also um, I think I'm going to try and do a 
free Ableton workshop, not this weekend, but next weekend. I'll talk more about that later, but um, making music, it has never been easier to just start. And I feel like it's so easy to have fun quickly. Um, maybe one last thing I'll add to that. Justin, um, you know, mentions that we made a song together. Um, we made it on my computer. I have like an old computer and a new computer. The, <laughs> the new one doesn't have any like VSTs. So it's, we made it with just stock Ableton sounds and samples. And it's just so crazy how you don't need fancy stuff to make music. Um, yeah, we, we live in a, an amazing time right now. It's and crazy. It, I, without sounding like the guy who's like, when I used to, I used to have to walk in 10 feet of snow to school and Coca-Cola cost a penny. Like it really is the easiest it has ever been. It is so amazing with DJing as well. And, and I love it. I think that it's, um, if you ever wanted to, you know, dive in now is the time. Like it's, it's music is such an amazing experience that's meant to be shared with as many ways as possible. So be a part of that. Yeah. hundred percent. And, you know, I don't know if you feel this way, but it's just like, for me, making music is just something that makes me happy. And I just have so much fun doing it. Um, it's like, I don't know. I, I just can't get over how awesome of an activity it is. And if it can, if you can pick up something that can just give you joy when all you need is, you know, a computer and some headphones, <laughs> like just, yeah, it's awesome. Um, to just keep it going, Raul, good to hear from you, dude. What Raul up, buddy? Know, <laughs> fuck yeah. Uh, Raul wants to know, Justin, how are your 808s always so filthy? Any advice on getting those fat, <laughs> dirty up, 808s? Raul? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's funny. We, if, if... I want to know this answer. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I think, um, well, first of all, I have like one 808. Raw, I've already talked to him about this. We had pizza in DC and, and I told him my secrets. But I have one 808 sound that I use in almost every single track. But <laughs> it's just this really, really clean 808 that is sort of like a blank canvas and you can you know layer it with other things. It just has a very tight um, tonal quality to it. I almost want to just like give it to everybody because it's so, so, it's so amazing. <laughs> Dude, maybe, maybe if you're open to it, maybe yeah. I can send it out over email. I feel like that, I'm sure make a lot of people happy. Yeah. You, I mean, there's, there's definitely a lot of like creativity that, that goes along with it because every single track has a different variation of it. Um, and a lot of it is layering, just, you know, uh you have your sub frequencies and then you have um sort of the the gritty stuff that pops out over the laptop speakers um right. when i was making tracks before i you know ha was able to do like laptop tests or phone tests you some of those tracks you go back and you just don't you can't hear the bass at all like now i i definitely feel like um we have these awesome tools with these like tiny little speakers in front of us so we can hear how things will sound on a phone or on a laptop where most people listen to it um so yeah l layering bass lines you know getting the sub frequencies and then making space for something that has more of a tonal quality or like a grittiness on top of it um cool. that's awesome um feel free to not answer this question if you'd like but i'm just curious is this magical 808 sample something you found from a sample pack or from someone else's song that's a good question it's definitely not a sample pack cool um i don't remember i think it might yeah i don't i don't remember it's it's cool. i've used it since the beginning of time so <laughs> that's awesome dude um, i love it i love it the mysterious 808 dude and we don't need to know the answer yeah <laughs> that's awesome i just found one that i liked and and i'm like this this fits this that's is, awesome yeah oh. like the same 808 that was used in uh function it was used in um what else it was used in my track 
I mean, it was used in so many songs. Crazy. That's awesome. Yeah. And I, I feel the same way. Like when you find a sound that works, it's almost like it's becomes its own instrument, just like having a guitar. You're like, that's my 808 sample. I can use it in all these different ways, all these different moments. And yeah. when you find those things that work, you can you can use them, have them in your toolbox. Yeah, totally, totally. Back to the jungle. That that's the 808 that's in there. <laughs> Sick. That's awesome. Um, all right, let's keep it rolling. Jesse wants to know, will you ever release the song that goes, this is my home, the Bjork bootleg? You know, I've tried so hard. I tried so hard. We did everything to clear that sample. Um, and at this point, I actually think that it is just going to live in my sets. Um, I love Bjork as an artist too much to just put it out like as this it's a, it's a very sentimental thing to me so i i love what it does to people it does the same thing to me i love sharing that experience with people um i never thought that like it would become this sort of thing um but you know we got it all the way to her desk the label um uh, signed off on it and this was right before the pandemic it was like maybe like a, three weeks before everything went to shit and we went to lockdown and and it was happening like all she had to do is like sign off and the sample was going to be cleared and um and then everything just kind of got lost in the shuffle i ended up doing this um that um uh change.org thing where there was over like 500 people that wrote these testimonials to me about moments that they had on the dance floor with the song. And it was like, I mean, just talking about it, it makes me emotional. It, it's, it, I, I just feel like um, at this point, it's become its own thing. It's special where it is, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm almost feel like it's meant to be this like thing just saved for special moments. Um, and if she were to somehow someday, if anybody in here knows Bjork, like sign off on it, then I would love to release it officially. But um, I definitely would not have somebody re-sing it. Um, I and I and I def I don't feel good about just like releasing um, a track that's so nostalgic and sentimental to me just for free. I I feel like it. it it's more important for me to just have it as something that's a moment for me to share with you when you, you know, when we're on the dance floor together. That's awesome. And dude, I'm rooting for you. Ah, who knows? One day. Yeah. I mean, I, I haven't given up. There's, there's by no means have I given up and yeah, I, I still play it quite a bit. So it's awesome. And I feel like there, you know, when it means that much to you, I feel like, I don't know if there's the way you talk about it, uh, there's magic to it even you know when it becomes that moment that you can't get anywhere else other than on the dance floor that's really special in its own way um carlos asks how do you find artists you want to sign to your label um that's a good question um you know i i, I wasn't really looking for a while i the the label for me started off as this ultimate form of self-expression and creativity. Um, it was a challenge for me to be able to release my own music, but also um, dig into other forms of artistic expression. Um, and I found as the years have gone by since I launched the label in 2020, the thing that I was missing the most was this peer community that I was so used to working with, you know, previous different record labels. And um, I never really went on a hunt to find new music, but um, certain music landed in my lap that just had to be released on what to do. It just was the perfect fit. Um, and yeah, Mantra, uh, I'm looking at, at him right now. Um, he's the first, uh, his album is the first thing that I signed from another artist. Um, and that, you know, 
introduced me to Victoria, um, who you can hear on um, my latest single, um, Defrost My Heart, um, doing a spoken word. But you guys have no idea what you're in for. There's so much amazing music on the way from from these two. And um, there's other music that I've, I've started to sign as well. Um, I, I, I think, you know, send it to me. That's, that's it. I, I listen to everything. Um, don't take it the wrong way if it's not the right fit. Um, some things like just can be, tracks can be absolutely amazing and not be the right fit for what to do. I also am like, it's just me. I, I, I have a, a really small team and I don't really have the capacity to have a release schedule like some of these bigger labels. So every project has to be something that I'm extremely passionate about and that I believe in, whether it's my own music or somebody else's. So um, yeah, absolutely don't be afraid to send me your best stuff. Um, and But just know that you have to be patient if I do sign it because it's, there's, it's not like a quick process. Um, uh, there's, we're, we're pretty far back on releases right now. Um, but it's okay. The music I, I, I'm trying to release is, in, in my eyes, timeless. So it, when it does come out, people, I think, are going to enjoy it for quite a long time. That's awesome. And curious, how would you, this is a very difficult question, how would you describe what it is you're even looking for for the label? Are there any, you know, and are you looking for just house music or is it? No, not just open? house music. No, um, anything that has an emotional um, value attached to it. Um, anything that, you know, I, I want to feel something. I want to feel something beyond just a baseline and a funky beat. I want to feel moved. I want to feel like the soul of the song. So, um, and that's just specifically what, what I, I I mean, that's not, I don't speak for every label. So if that's not your thing, then like all good. Like, doesn't mean I'm not going to play your music either. Like, please send me whatever you're working on. Cause I, I love everything across the board. Um, but yeah, when it comes to stuff for what to do, I really want it to be, have like an emotional value attached to it. Um, something that will invoke feelings of, of extreme joy or, you know, nostalgia or, or even, you know, retrospective sadness, like things that just make you feel. Yeah, that's awesome. And I don't know, I, I, I love, I, I, it resonates really strongly with me oh, when you talk this about- this is important. Oh. I, I saw yeah, someone say, what's the at to send? So um, I am horrible, notoriously horrible at checking my email. Um, so I do check my Instagram DMs. Like that is like, I try to keep up almost to a point of like, um, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very good about it. Like I, if, if there's DMs unread, then I'm like, I can't go to bed at night. So um, if you want to send me music, the best way to do it is send me a link that's ready to listen to in there that takes minimal effort, like, you know, either a Dropbox or a um, SoundCloud. I'm not good at necessarily giving you feedback on a song like I you know I I don't want to give you my opinion of whether I like it or not if, if I love it then I, I, I'll probably be begging to sign it but I think that my opinion is just one of you know however many billion people there are on this planet so like I don't I don't hold the what I think about a song doesn't mean it's good or bad, or if I'm not signing, it does not mean by any means that it's not a good track. Um, I, I always just try to encourage people to just, you know, be creative and try to find their own sound and, um, and keep going. Don't stop. That's it. Like, uh, that's always going to be my advice. If you want to know what I think about a song, um, and if I'm playing it in, in my sets, then I, I freaking love it. 
and send me more. That's awesome. And just to kind of reaffirm, I feel like I've had so many moments where a label says, no, it's not the right fit. That doesn't mean that the song isn't good. I've had right. so many moments where the song gets rejected by a bunch of labels and ends up in the home that it was meant for and it all works out and people might really love that song. And yeah, I don't know. Just yeah. And and if you, if you believe in it and you know, there's, there's a lot of labels right now that are looking for one specific thing and maybe that's not what you're making. Um, I, you know, again, I said this earlier, that's the whole reason why I ended up starting what to do because I didn't really feel like the music I was making necessarily fit and a lot of these other more mainstream labels. So don't be afraid to put stuff out yourself. Um, start a band camp, just, just do it. Um, fucking do it. And, you know, I, that's one of the things going back again, to what I was saying earlier, like, I love how much you inspire people, Justin, to, um, to create. And it really is a, uh, a fantastic voyage that, <laughs> that we're all on together and, and, and with you leading the charge. I, I, and this is, yeah, I really appreciate everything that, that you do, man. And I appreciate you having me here to talk dude, to people. Dude, such a, such a delight to have you. Um, I, uh, you know, I feel like well, one last thing that's kind of funny. I noticed, uh, I think, let me just double check. Yeah. Edward White is in the mix actually. And it's funny cause he was, you know, someone I worked with um, and he ended up doing a remix for yeah. your, uh, for your remix album. I, I'm curious, how did that come together? I discovered him through you. <laughs> no way. Through That's the, uh, so awesome. It was like one of the, the boot camp uh, compilations, I think, right? Yeah. yeah I was like, this dude is dope. And I, I, I've, I've discovered so much good music through you, Justin. Damn. Yeah what up man how are you <laughs> what's good thank you guys so much this was like super inspirational really appreciate it dude unreal thank you for swinging by edward and dude of course that, <laughs> it's you damn that fires me up ah oh, so awesome um okay i know i know you're gonna have to jump one last question that i saw favorite vst favorite synthesizer what you got favorite vst is the I don't know the proper pronunciation. Um, I've I've heard it be called the Niphonium or the Kinephonium. Um, <laughs> starts with a K and here I'll type it in the chat. Oh, oh, I don't think I can. That someone did it. All right, there we go. Yes, cool. that is a great um vst it is super fun oh my god there's so many though i can't even think like i like the mellotron vst for like crazy old school strings um i like what else omnisphere i've been diving back into that that's so crazy um i i'm i i'm yeah there's too many oh my gosh i'm i there's a really great um, uh, VST called Mellofy, um, and it's it's sort of like a Mellotron emulator. So it makes everything sort of sound like tape samples, and you can create, you can control the filter, the um, you know, uh, everything from like the wow to flutter to the wear on the tape, um, and you can put that on anything. Um, it's not like a you know a synth VST. So um, that's that's a great one as well that I absolutely love. And my favorite synthesizer, it changes every day. <laughs> um, I think currently maybe the Udo Super 6. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's probably my favorite currently. It's just like a, it, it sounds so different than anything else that I have in the studio. But I always try to get things that sound different than everything else. Like the, um, I have an actual nephonium that, um, that is so crazy because the, they're super rare, but the, um, the plugin actually, like I, I use the plugin now more than the real thing. Um, it emulates it so well, considering it's like this, uh, tube synthesizer, um, 
yeah i don't know i think we might need to do like a whole nother chat on this like gear stuff because i i i feel like it, i i don't know a kid on christmas when i start talking <laughs> yeah that's awesome I, I don't even know where to begin but let's yeah let's go fuck yeah um comment in the chat if you would like <laughs> at some point in the future to nerd out and go deep on sims and gears yes i think uh i think there's a few people who might be into that um <laughs> um fuck yeah um just to wrap dude one last piece of advice for anyone out there who's trying to have fun what do you say how do you have fun making music what's your advice hang out with fun people hang out with positive yeah. influences hang out with people that um that you look up to and admire that um that make you feel good cool surround yourself with people that make you feel good oh. uh, it doesn't even have to be just in the music realm i think in life in general um that's such a I, I get so much inspiration from my friends and my family and Dude. i think it's really important to hang on to the people that are positive influence in your life oh that is so beautiful and dude on that note thank you for being in my life and being that positive influence and for sharing that amazing energy with all of us today could everyone unmute make some noise for Justin Martin. Thank you so much, dude. Thank you for your time. Thank you. 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 you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, um, yeah, thank thank you. I'm um, dude. Really for this. Uh, love you so much. Thank you again, and thank you each and every one of you for swinging by, sticking around, hanging out. We'll send through a recording of this over email, um, just for anyone who wants to rewatch anything. If you have, you know, if the if there was anything that stood out, you know, I feel like don't be shy to drop a little message either to myself or the other Justin. Um, <laughs> and dude, um, I hope to do some more free music lectures over the coming weeks. Just share the love. Um, yeah, just doing all this, making music, DJing, it's the most fun. Doing it with great people around you. You can't beat that. And um, my hope is that for everyone here, um, wherever you're at, I hope you have some fun listening to music, DJing, making music, no matter where you're at in your journey, giving it a shot and just going for it. Um, and on that note, I hope everyone has a lovely evening and hopefully we'll catch all of you soon. Thank fun. you, everybody. Yeah, Thank you. Love, 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 love you, Justin. Love you, too. <laughs> the Justin. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> stay, stay yeah, eight away. Fuck, yeah. Uh, all right, Justin, I'll talk to you soon, dude. Love right. you. Love you. Good, though, because Bye.